All right, I think this is the last one I'm gonna do tonight. Um, and it's just I remembered I wanna make a short one about what did I eat in Guinea? Um, in Guinea, you can you can buy oatmeal pretty fairly easily and margarine, so and uh, along with sugar, so you can actually make oatmeal every day if you wanted to. Um, that's what I did for a long time before I had built my garden and started growing my own plants. Um, once I had my garden going, I would always go to the bakery, get fresh bread. And then I'd go get sardines from the market with mayonnaise and vinegar and oil and then mix it all together with lettuce and jalapenos and onions and uh, I'd have like a tuna, uh, a sardine salad in the morning. And that was always, always super filling. For, for lunch, if I didn't eat that again, <laughs> um, because you know, that could last you, you can do that a few times a day if you wanted to. My principal's family would cook for me and the mainstay of most Canadian dishes is peanut butter, peanut butter sauce. So the peanut butter is like boiled and mixed. It can be mixed with cassava leaves, which is like um, a starch, a manioc. Um, so the cassava leaves, it can be mixed with like spinach or um, quite a few other leaves. Other times it's just boiled and mixed with tomato sauce. And so it's very liquidy. And then it's cooked with fish or meat or, um, and potatoes. And I'll actually a surprising number of pumpkins too. Um, which I thought was always my favorite pumpkin tomato potato <laughs> tomato pumpkin tomato potato peanut butter soup um, I thought it was delicious <laughs> um, I think, Again, th those were dishes I always bought or my principal's family cooked for me What I made for myself I had a lot of eggs in my diet for dinner um, I would get rice and sometimes make like a like fiesta style um, dishes with um, rice, eggs, bell peppers, peppers, onions, and just a bunch of margarine. Um, what else? Spaghetti. I made a ton of spaghetti. I would. I took advantage of the bakeries. You know, there's every village is gonna have a small little bakery, and you can take advantage of that for baking. And so I baked pizza. I had my parents send me over some uh, pizza dishes and I would uh, go buy flour at the market, make my own flour, um, breading, um, the crust I mean. And I would uh, saute um, mushrooms, eggplants, onions, sometimes sardines. <laughs> I know, it's a, it's a thing. And if I had meat, I'd do that too. Mix it all together after sauteing it, put it into, um, you have to saute the eggplant before because otherwise it's just going to be too much um, liquidy. And then I mix it all together with tomato sauce, put it in um, this pizza pie with laughing cow cheese and go get it baked. And that's how I had pizza. It was super delicious. Um, market days, you'll get the most amount of food because, you know, there's always going to be like sweet bread and goat meat, you know, kebabs, but also BSAP. <sighs> BSAP. Mm. Talk to anyone who's been a volunteer or worked in West Africa and they will love BSAP. And BSAP is hibiscus. It's basically just hibiscus frozen, uh, so like hibiscus lemonade basically. And I would, I don't think there was a single weekend where I didn't have my face colored purple from me drinking BSAP. Um, other than that, there's a few dishes during Ramadan that are different. There's like one that has palm oil and okra, which I could eat for days. I don't know why they only have it available for that season. It's just how it is. Um, but yeah, a lot of these dishes, they're going to be new and different for you and probably way too spicy. You'll have to ask people to like not put in peppers or you have to slowly get used to it because their peppers are hot. <laughs> yeah. Um, you might get used to fried eggs being overly fried, but you know, take advantage of it because that's energy. There's a lot of energy that oil. You might get used to um, eating just bread and mayonnaise. And if it's hot bread, it's going to be like kind of like a melted mayonnaise. But you can put like laughing cow cheese and then you have like a cheese sandwich. <laughs> 
or maybe like a boiled egg and then put, make, mix it up a little bit. There's a long mango season, so don't worry about not having mangoes. And you'll have so many mangoes, you'll probably live in a place where the mangoes fall from their trees and you actually have to watch out because you might get hit by one. Um, mangoes, avocados, you can get you can always get avocados and mangoes and pumpkins. Um, papaya, if you like papaya. I don't like papaya just because I think it looks gross. I can eat it, but I just think it looks gross. And yeah, that's basically it for main stuff. For a lot of food, my parents were so nice and so great, they would actually send me food um, every few weeks, just stuff that I uh, was missing or things that I wanted, a lot of protein bars um, and some like certain mixtures and soups and uh, actually uh, some meat sausages too. And how they did it was they had a vacuum sealed uh, sealer and so they would vacuum seal everything, even if it was already in plastic or some sort of container, just to make it double safe and then put it in a box and send it to me. And by the time I got to me, it'd actually be pretty good. I got everything. Uh, I, I only lost like maybe one or two things and it was a pretty good deal. But yeah, if, if you uh, have any questions about like what I ate or how I prepared food, uh, just let me know and I'll get back to you. But I think the diet, once you get used to it, once you know what works with your body and, you know, just getting used to different cooking styles, different food, like you'll do fine. Um, you might even gain weight. <laughs> you, you'll certainly be able to afford it all on your budget. Don't worry. All right. Take care.